Hey guys, Kyle D at ZZP here. Today we're going to be installing our plug and play Haltech kit for the Polaris Slingshot. What we've got here today is we've got our PCM tray, the Haltech ECU, the wideband, a flex fuel sensor so you can run E85, gasoline, or any combination of the both. We've got a plug and play harness for your PCM. We've got a multi function gauge that'll show you a bunch of engine data. And you've got a brand new ZZP billet fuel rail. It comes with everything you need to install the kit from A to B, and it should only take you a couple hours. So let's get started on the install. We're gonna start the install off by removing the battery. You're probably not new to the slingshot world, but just in case, your battery's located down here on the driver's side underneath the plastic. You'll start off by removing the T two T40 Torx bits and the two push pin connectors to remove that plastic panel. After that, disconnect the negative and the power, and we'll get started on the rest of the install. I've already disconnected the battery, so we're gonna get started on the install right here. First, we'll get rid of our fuse box cover, and now we're gonna get started on removing your actual PCM tray. You'll start by removing your three connectors on the PCM tray. To remove the connectors, you're gonna pull down these little red tabs, and you'll push down on that center button, pull up on this lever, and that'll bring all your connectors up. After that, you just remove each connector and push those off to the side for now. Next, we're gonna remove the two bolts holding your fuse box in. This is gonna be a five millimeter Allen. Next up, we're gonna remove the PCM from the PCM tray by removing these two 10 millimeter bolts. Once you got that PCM out of the way, you're gonna to wanna to take off the actual plastic PCM tray here. My PCM tray doesn't exactly fit in here anymore, but you'll find two T40 Torx bolts here and here, and there's a third one down here. Sometimes an extension will help it reach down in a little bit better. After that, lift your PCM tray out of the way, and you're done. Next up on the list, you're going to want to disconnect your fuel line. Your main fuel line feed is right here down on the bottom, which connects to your fuel rail. You'll want to push in on the connector and pull up on it to remove it. You might want to put a rag down here as you might get a little bit of fuel that comes out of this line. Same thing when you go up here. Once you've got the fuel line removed, you're going to want to disconnect your injectors from the main injector harness. You'll want to disconnect your map sensor as well. Once you got that out of the way, you can undo the main harness here and you can pull that harness right out. Next up, we're gonna move, remove the fuel rail. To get rid of the fuel rail, you're gonna take out the two 10 millimeter bolts right here on the top. With those out of the way, you're gonna grab your fuel rail and just wiggle it gently back and forth to, get all, to pull out the injectors. Now, there are some injector isolators that are down inside the head. If those happen to come out still attached to your injector, don't worry about it, not a big deal. Just put pull it off and stick it right back down in there. Next up, we're gonna be removing these clips from your injectors so we can pull the injectors out. Now, your whole fuel rail is still full of fuel, so you don't wanna tip this too far, too far either way. I would recommend getting a bucket before you pull this first injector out. We're gonna take the injector clips off. You can use your flathead screwdriver. If you've got strong fingers, you can use those as well. Now what I would recommend doing is you'll get over a bucket, hold it just like this, and just kind of pull that first injector out and let any fuel that's in there dump out. Once that's done, continue with the rest and you might still get a little bit of gas that comes out each time. Now you're gonna to wanna to put your new injectors inside your new ZZP billet fuel rail. I've already got them in here, but when you insert them in there, make sure you take some dielectric grease and put it around the O-ring on the, on the bottom of the injector and also on the top. Once you've got that completed, we'll head back over to the slingshot and we'll put these injectors back into the engine. You're going to take your injectors, put them right back up into the holes, line it up with those two holes on top of the brackets, and push down until you feel those injectors lock back in. We've included a couple M6 bolts and washers to reattach your fuel rail. With your fuel rail bolted down, you can now put your injector harness back on.
With your harness back on, now what we're going to do is take out the two 13 millimeter bolts out of your coolant tank to make the next part a little easier. Next up, you're going to take the supplied boost solenoid and you're going to attach this to the side of the head. I've already got mine attached right here, but you'll right on the side of the head here is where you'll attach it at the front with your, the 10 millimeter bolt that we supply you with. Once you've got that all secured down, you're going to need to unhook and take out your O2 sensor. I've already got mine taken out of the pipe, but we're just going to unhook it now. You're not going to need this anymore, so you can put this off to the side. Once you've got that out of there, you're going to replace it with your new Haltech wideband O2 sensor. It'll go right down into the downpipe, right where your OEM one was, and you'll just leave this wire hanging off to the side for now, and we'll connect it to the wideband a little bit later. Your plug and play kit comes with a harness that we've made the install easier for you with. It'll have the one short leg, which is going to plug into your flex fuel sensor later, and it'll have a long leg, which we're going to hook to the boost control, the boost solenoid that we just put on the side of that block. What you're going to do is you'll lay this down right about where your old PCM was. This is the DTM8 connector, which is going to hook into your main harness in a little while. Once you get that in there, you're going to take the connector for the flex fuel sensor, and you'll just want to lay it down right in this general area. This doesn't have to be precise because we'll line everything up a little bit later. You'll then take your connector for your boost solenoid and you'll put it behind your radiator or your coolant bottle. You'll get it under your coolant reservoir. Pull out the slack and you'll want to run it all along this outer rail. Once you get up to the front of the engine, you'll go underneath your charge pipe and you'll come up and you'll plug it right on to the top of that boost solenoid. Once that's in there, you can go back and you'll want to zip tie all this in place to keep it secure. The next part, we're going to plug in the plug and play harness from Haltech. What you'll want to do is these are color coded. So you're just going to put the blue with the blue, the gray with the gray, and the black with the black. Now, once these are all in there, you're going to want to give this a, one little twist, and you're going to want to get these down inside your transmission tunnel. I already have a Haltech ECU in mine, so my connectors are already in there, so I'm not going to be able to shove this one down in there for the install. But once you get these down in there, you'll want to tuck it down, and you'll go underneath the slingshot, and you'll want to put a zip tie around this and secure it to the bottom of the hard fuel line which is going through the trans tunnel as well, just to hold everything in place. Once you have all that in there, you can just, you'll want, it, you'll want to end up with your connectors right about in this area right here. And you'll just want to leave them off to the side for right now. For this next part, I would recommend taking out your stock cluster. To take out the stock cluster, you're going to find a T40 Torx bolt on the top here on either side of the cluster. Take those out and you'll find three more T40 Torx bolts on the bottom side of this. Once you have those out, you can separate the two halves and remove this steering column cover. Once you've got that removed, you're going to want to take that flat connector that came with your gauge and you're going to want to pass that through into this open spot behind the cluster. Once you've got it, you'll just want to pull it most of the way through. You'll see we've got this orange wire that's on here too. This is actually an optional wire. If you hook this up to a 12 volt switch power, this will provide the backlight for the gauge. We're not going to be doing that on install on this install because there's so many different ways to do it, whether you want to hook it up to a switch power somewhere or you've got an external fuse box for lights or stereo or whatever else you might have on board your slingshot. Once you've got that pulled through, you just want to take the DTM4 connector and you'll just want to lay it up here off to the side for a little bit. Once you've got these off, take the gauge pod mount and you're going to, I've already marked it here. You're going to want to make sure that you can see it through your steering wheel. You'll drill a 730 seconds hole on each one of these two white marks. And then you'll use the supplied hardware to bolt the mount through the plastic and secure it there. Once you have that there mounted, you're going to want to pass this wire through the ring you'll connect the power wire to the top port on the back of your gauge. 
Once you've got that on there, you're going to want to take the gauge cup, feed your wires right into it, push the gauge in, and slide it into the gauge pod holder. Now you're going to want this line right here facing your steering column to protect it as much as possible. Once you've got that in there, you can take the supplied grommet, put that on the back, and that'll add some extra weatherproofing to the back of the gauge. Once you're done, your gauge should be mounted in here and look just like this. You'll just wanna secure this bottom screw to tighten up the gauge and hold it securely in place. Now that you've got your gauge mounted and your steering column cover put back together, it's time to put in the main PCM tray. This is gonna come pre-assembled with the PCM already mounted to the tray along with the flex fuel connector and the wide band. You're gonna to wanna to lay this right where your old PCM was and kinda of guide the fuse box into the hole that's been cut out for it. Now, we've also supplied you with new hardware to get this in, so we're just gonna slide that in real quick and getting everything tightened up. The first one you're gonna to wanna to do is this 10 millimeter bolt. You're gonna to wanna to reach your hand in here and you're gonna to wanna to get it back in there's a hole down in the PCM tray. You're gonna to wanna to get the bolt through the hole and get it back into that bolt hole that was in the frame of the first PCM tray down low. You'll wanna leave that kind of loose so you can go back in and tighten up these last two. You'll take the supplied M6 bolts and you'll put these right here in the base. and you'll replace your bolts that were holding your fuse box in. Tighten these down with your five millimeter Allen. Once you've got that taken care of, you're going to take your DTM4 connector and you're going to plug in your wideband to your ECM. You'll put it right into this first port, like so, and you can take the rest of this. We're going to get the wideband out of the way here. We're going to take the rest of this and you can tuck it right up under the dash and you'll plug that in right here. While you're over here, you can take the DTM4 connector that went to your multifunction gauge that you mounted to your steering column. You can pass this wire underneath here as well, and you can plug that into the other port of your wideband. Once you've got that done, you can take your cable for your wideband and you'll follow the same path that you did with the harness earlier behind the coolant reservoir. And we'll plug that in to our wideband sensor in just a second. Once you've got it fed through, you'll hook it up right to the connector that you had for your wideband earlier. If you've got some extra slack, you can do what I did here and just strap it right to the cable. We supplied you with a stainless braided fuel line. You'll look at the two connectors and you'll notice that one has a 3 8 inch hole and one has a 5 16 inch hole. The 3 8 inch hole is going to go right onto your flex fuel sensor and your 5 16 connector is gonna go right on your main fuel feed line. You'll press it down until you feel it click into place and you'll do the same on the flex fuel sensor. Once that's in, we're gonna connect the flex fuel sensor back to your fuel rail. You'll wanna start by connecting the 90 degree connector to the end of your fuel rail. You'll snug up the fitting using your 6AN wrench, which is made out of aluminum. We use aluminum wrenches because they don't scratch the AN fittings. If you don't have one, you can use a crescent wrench, but I would advise you to either put a rubber glove or a rag in between that and the fitting. Once you've got that on there, you're gonna take your line and you're gonna loop it right underneath your flex fuel sensor and you're gonna plug in the other connector onto here. Once you've got that on, snug down this, 
and snug down the fuel rail one more time and your fuel system's done. Now that you've got all this in here, you can take your connector from, that you laid in earlier for your flex fuel sensor and you can plug your flex fuel sensor in. You can also take your two connectors for the main ECU and you can plug those in as well. Once you have that, you'll take the DTM8 connector from your main harness and the one from the plug and play harness that we supplied you with and you'll connect those together as well. You can take this and you can tuck that up under your dash as well. Since you're running our turbo kit, you've got a boost line that comes off your intake manifold. It comes over to here in the front of the engine and it tees off and one line feeds your blow off valve and the other line runs over to your wastegate. What you're going to do is you're going to break into that with the metal, we've supplied you with a quarter inch T. You're going to T in right where it comes off your intake manifold and you're going to run a line over and plug it right onto this nipple on the end of your hall tech. The rubber line that we've supplied you with to hook up your hall tech and the boost solenoid is eighth inch line. We've given you a quarter inch brass T to T into your existing uh, boost line system. It's going to be a tight fit, but it will get on there. I would suggest putting a little bit of dielectric grease on the quarter inch brass T nipple that you have left over from when you put it on your in fuel injectors. Make sure you're using zip ties on all of these connections so they don't come off as you build boost. Now we're gonna complete the hookup of the boost solenoid. To do that, you've got your boost line that came across the front of your engine off of your intake manifold, and it was initially going to the bottom port on your wastegate. You're gonna take that line off, cut it back, and you're gonna to wanna to attach it to this top nipple on your boost solenoid. From there, you're gonna to wanna to take another piece of rubber line which we've supplied, and you're gonna to wanna to connect it to the bottom nipple on your boost solenoid and run that to the bottom port on your wastegate. The top port on your wastegate and the bottom nipple on your boost solenoid are both going to remain open to atmosphere. Again, make sure you're putting zip ties on all your connections so they don't pop off as you build boost. We're on the home stretch and we've only got a few things left to do. You're gonna to need to tighten your coolant reservoir back down, come back here and hook your battery back up. And once you've done that, you can hop in your slingshot and you're gonna turn the key on and count to three. Once you've done that, turn it back off and repeat that process two more times. What that's gonna do is fill your fuel lines, your fuel rail, and your flex fuel sensor full of fuel to get everything primed and ready to go. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and key back on, hit the start button, and go for a drive. After you go for a drive, email me, Kyle, at zzperformance.com so we can pull the data log and make sure everything is good. That wraps up our install. Remember, if you run into any snags along the way, feel free to email me directly at kyle at zzperformance.com. You can reach me on Facebook Messenger, or you can also call my direct office line. The number is on the install instructions at the bottom of the first page. And if you've liked what you've seen and you want to see more slingshot content, click on that like button and also hit the subscribe. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you later.